Dare to Dream. And I'm coming to you with some explosive news. No, actually, <laughs> I am going to come to you with a really fun show today because I don't get to do this like ever. And it's my party and I'm going to have fun if I want to. So first, I want to say thank you for the gorgeous lip makeup from my dear friend. I want to make sure you can see this. Miles. Miles is the bomb.com. He is the, the dude who makes you look flawless and gorgeous. He's been in makeup and hair forever. And he sent over this incredible set of lip fabulousness. I just adore this guy. So look, if e either if you want to be taught how to do your makeup, if you want your makeup done, you want to buy makeup, this is the guy. Please go see him. I'm so happy to support him because, like I said, he's the best at what he does. And I love people who are passionate and fabulous. And I also want to thank you guys. This show has been nominated for two People's Podcast Choice Awards. And as you know, you can see this show on YouTube, youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger. You can listen on radio at BBS, uh, Radio Public, iHeartRadio. Also, we're on Pandora and where else? Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts. Here's what I love, Spreaker, Stitcher. I love when you leave us comments. So subscribe because isn't it fun that the show comes right into your inbox? You don't have to go too far. And leave us a review. We love you for that too. The show is sponsored by Dr. Dane here and Access Consciousness because they do the most gorgeous energy work out into the world. And when I say the world, I mean the entire world. So anywhere you're located, you can go to drdanehear.com or accessconsciousness.com and find a service, a book, a class, a way to become a facilitator or have bars energy work done on you. It's really well worth it. And so on to why I'm here and already so full of joy and mirth. Mwaha. I have a dear friend here with me today and we're going to be doing this live to you together. And it is Corinne Grillo. And I know her as many things, but her latest venture is as an author of this incredible, beautiful book called The Angel Experiment. And you can get your copy on Amazon. I highly recommend you do because one of the things that's really fun when you track through the book that I'm doing is you get to these daily meditations. I love people who make things simple for you. So she teaches you the specific angels, why they're here, what you can reach out to them for. And there's all these web, web URLs, right? This is free when you get the book and you can go there and listen to the meditation from that angel for that angel for today. And by the way, you can't say, but I'm too busy because she makes them three to four minutes. Hello. That's the way to start your day. So do you know what the connection is between nature and angels? I ask, and you know how to invoke the help of an angel and specifically which angel to ask for your need. My guest today is Corinne Grillo. She's the author of The Angel Experiment, and she is the founder of the Angel Alchemy Academy. She's a trained psychotherapist, an angel channel, a healer, and a teacher. Corinne has already helped thousands of people all over the world go from angel curious to angel powered. She lives in Northern California. You can find her online at corinnegrillo.com. I will spell that for you. It's C-O-R-I-N-G-R-I-L-L-O.com. Com. And it is without further ado that I bring my dear friend Corinne to the show. And I'm going to be doing the fancy uh, camera work here. We're going to take down this fabulous screen. Ta da! <laughs> there she is, yes, Corinne Grillo. Huzzah! Hi. She is Hi, here today. So, oh my God, I'm so psyched. The first thing we need to do, we know what we got to do. She just had the greatest success with this book. She's doing a tour de force. She's being interviewed everywhere, TV, radio, podcast. And I am so honored to have her here and to introduce her to you. So to your book, The Angel Experiment, and to becoming the most amazing author 
sharing your gift and Aww, service with us. Thank you. Congratulations. So great to be here. This is tequila, by the way. It is. In case you were wondering. And she asked, was I going to pound it just so she, <laughs> so she would, you know, know how to temper or go for it. I, I just didn't want to have a bunch left in my glass if she was going to finish the whole thing. So, you know. That's tequila people. Uh, so that's an, a second first, by the way, I have to admit, I have never drunk on air. <laughs> okay, here we go. So yeah, cheers, cheers. to tequila, tequila, drinking, celebrating. And you. angels. And angels. <laughs> oh my God. So Corinne, I have so many questions, but I think I want to start with this because I really want people to get to know you. Being the enigma that you are. Yes. <laughs> What is the work you do out in the world? Because I'm fascinated, psychotherapist to this other realm. So Ooh. you offer a lot. I'd love to know just your offering your services. Uh, yes. I mean, I started out as a licensed psychotherapist, just as a classical li licensed psychotherapist until the angels came to me and they essentially created this mind-blowing experience AKA a miracle that really tunes me into the fact that angels were real and that we're not alone and that angels are actually right here, right now, ready to work for us. So mm -hmm. since that day, step-by-step, step, I started listening to my intuition and listening to the guidance of spirit. And uh, slowly but surely I started uh, bringing energy work into my practice and bringing channeling into my practice and, and eventually now teaching people all over the world, how to talk to angels, how angels talk back and how to literally create miracles in your heart and mind, life, bank account, business, and all of those good things. Oh my gosh. I am so curious when you say this, cause that's a huge transition. So you're a huge. licensed psychotherapist. Yeah. You've got a typical air quote practice. Yeah. You have a miracle occur in your mm -hmm. life. It changes the landscape of everything for you. And what I want to know when you talk about you're stepping into each of these pieces, including becoming a channeler and a healer, were you activated? Was mm -hmm. it that one fell swoop miracle or did it come piece by piece? And if so, how? You know, it's interesting. I, I If I have to answer that question, I'm going to have to say it came very came on very quickly mm, but it took wow. me it took me a while to catch up with what was actually happening so it was like one day for for the first 30 years of my life 35 years i suffered with insane depression and went through a lot early on and and uh, back then my only prayer was really that that day would be my last and then when the angels came in it was like I could hear a different voice inside of me that was hopeful. Maybe there's something to look forward to this day. And I could really uh, take in my life in a different way. And yeah, there was, I could feel the presence of angels, but it, it took me a while to really catch on what was happening. At first I thought, okay, first of all, when the, when the miracle actually happened, I, I had angel shame about it because that, that was not my, that was not my life. <laughs> Is there a 12 step program for that? I went through a whole process of like coping with my angel shame. And uh, because again, I came from a very clinical background mm -hmm. and also that wasn't my framework. Like I wasn't, you know, reading all the books and needing all of this. It just literally fell on my lap. And, and then I had to really cope with what was happening. And because most of my friends at the time were psychotherapists, oh. you're not going to talk about the fact that you saw this miracle and know that you're, more than likely I would have gotten hospitalized in my mind. I would yeah. have gotten hospitalized or put on antipsychotics or something like that. So I knew to kind of keep it to myself, but the radical transformation that was happening inside of me was really uh, intense. And the guidance that I was receiving, that it was like a whole different platform that I was standing in. And it took me a while to start owning it, to start owning my gift in, or the gift that was happening through me in my practice, uh, because I still kind of wanted to process the way a psychotherapist process mm. with these, with these things. And, but when someone's real, especially back then when someone was deeply in pain, I could feel the presence of angels really coming in. And then I have the choice whether or not to own it and say, Hey, uh, you got angels in the room because it didn't, people weren't coming to me for angel work back then. They were coming to me <laughs> as a psychotherapist. So I had to kind of toe that line between, what people expect and what was actually happening in the room. And when you started to open up and say, 
there's an opportunity here. There's an option. Are you interested in hearing? <laughs> yeah. And you started to bridge that gap and say, yeah, yeah. there's some information well, I'm here. I'm going to tell you Deb, exactly what I would tell them. Please. I would say, hey, you want to try some weird shit? <laughs> That's exactly what I would say this to is them. so correct. <laughs> so correct. Because then I would say, because then they would go, why not? And then I would say, you know, I... I here, there's angels in the room, and this is what I was still deep in angel shame. There's some angels in the room, and you may or may not believe it doesn't matter because they believe in you mm -hmm. and they're here for you. And so, do you want to hear some messages? And can we start moving some energy around? So somehow I navigated this really tricky thing. But again, when they're the the presence in the room was so profound, and I could like you know feel the energy of it. So I started doing it, and when people when people come to psychotherapists, it's for a reason. You know, they're not just coming just for fun, just to like, hey, let's just have some chips and nachos, some nachos and cheese, right? They're they're coming because they're suffering. And so most people, it, I remember one, one person who she had postpartum depression and she was crying for six years or six months straight after she had her baby. She couldn't take care of her baby, right? Everybody was worried about oh. her. And she came to me as a psychotherapist. But then I felt the angels come into the room and I said, hey, you want to try some weird shit? And she said, I'll try anything. And that's essentially what people do. They'll try anything at any point. So I started running the energy for her and bringing the angels in to come and clear her and help her. And mm. she called me the next day. She said she was able to sleep for the first time in six mm. months. She stopped crying and she stayed well for, she, you know, we, she kind of kept in contact and she stayed well. So, so, and that started happening over and over again in my practice. And then people uh, kept coming and telling their friends and you got to go see this therapist. She's not a real therapist. She's something else, but I'm not going to tell you. And uh, that's how it happened. Um, so it is, so when you say angel shame, Corinne, are there people out there who actually have angel experiences, but don't talk about it? Is there a, you know, I'm not being transparent about my angel experiences, uh, yeah. an underground railroad? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I have a feeling so. Yeah, and actually I meet a lot of people through my journey that by me coming out of the angel closet in the spiritual closet, then it gives them permission to kind of say, yeah, me mm. too. Because a lot of people I talk to are all over the world in different kinds of communities. And some people are from really hyper religious communities oh, where this kind of work is really does. like, oh, it's evil or it's not okay. I mean, yeah. I work with Muslims and I work with um, Jewish people and Christians and, and indigenous people. But what's interesting is that angels really do transcend any one religion, all religions talk about benevolent beings that are there for us. And I didn't come to this work from religion. I came to it from just life. And, uh, and yeah, there's people still kind of like pretending it's not happening, but it's like their secret thing that's going on in the background. And, hmm. and, uh, for me, step by step, I was encouraged to come farther out of the closet and then eventually so far out of the closet that I was to talk about angels to the world. So, okay, because my mind just went a few different places all at once. So I'm going to stick with this because I want to serve people. And I want to start with people out there who are saying, cool, I don't think I have that gift but damn, I'd love to be speaking to me some angels, right? I'd love to be, because like, who wouldn't? I mean, I a little bit feel that way as well. And if we can see or hear angels, how can we do that? So it really feels palpable. And I got to tell you something very interesting on that note. So when I'm reading your book, and somewhere in the beginning, you're taking us through this incredible, I loved how you started the book with a master invocation. Mm -hmm. Man, did I like that. It was so simple, but powerful. You could feel it. I could feel it. Yeah. And so, you know me, so you may appreciate this, but I have never had that feeling of like understanding the connection, seeing, feeling that mm -hmm. angel in particular. But when I did that invocation, I had a vision. And I heard an angel is a rock star. And then I literally saw an angel with this <laughs> silver outfit and these fabulous like glittery oh, silver wings with like a silver guitar and the fabulous freaking hair. I mean, it was a total rock star angel. 
And I'm like, oh my God, I'm having the first visceral experience. Like I literally can see you wow. and feel you and believe you. Like if I take you alone yeah. with me, this is going to work. That's enough, right? Yeah. 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 That's what it's about. I mean, so many of us have learned about angels or learned about spirit or God or whatever it is that- Rockstar <laughs> angels. Rockstar angels. Cheers to that. <laughs> I am. So many of us have learned about it from this book or someone preaching to us or some, something so far away. And really the purpose of the angel experiment is exactly that. It's creating your own unique palpable relationship beyond the, the doctrines that makes it so unique for you. So that's exactly what I'm talking about, that something you can connect with and go, oh, hello. And some people see visions like the one that you saw, mm. not exactly like that one. <laughs> <laughs> that's got a serious Deb flair. Hello. <laughs> Deb all over that one. A diva angel. I know, she's, I'm not shocked at that. Um, but some people really feel the presence. So my first mm. encounter with angels was this palpable feeling in my body that was so new to me because again, I suffered with depression and my mm. heart was really shut down. And all of a sudden there's this opening and it was like feathers going up and down my spine and my arms and little kisses on my cheek and holding my hand. And it's, all of a sudden I felt loved. And so many of the people that work with a book or have been working with me for years have their own beautiful little ways that angels make contact and they come to us in a way that we understand. So of course, hello, you're coming, you know, you're, you're getting the rock and roll angels. Of course. Yeah, I dig it. Oh my God. That's so cool. It is so cool. <laughs> I, I am so curious if people are out there, I'll be feel so much better if somebody will write to us and let us know that they are, they're live in this. Cause it says we're streaming. I have to believe, I have to believe in, in, the angels. <laughs> so do the angels introduce us? I, I know that's like whatever question, but we met under sort of interesting circumstances and we could have been two people passing by like that. I know, right? I mean, so yeah. we met, we were at a mastermind function, which was huge, by the way, tons of people. And a bunch of us, like a lot of us, <laughs> went out to party the last karaoke. night. I think it was karaoke. <laughs> I know. It's weird. And you literally walked up to me and said, Where did you get those pumpkin colored pants? <laughs> I love those pants. I loved you the moment you opened your mouth. I was like, I'm done with this lady. <laughs> she likes my pants. Done. And you were hilarious too when you spoke to me. <laughs> you were so funny. And I was like, Oh my, it was so refreshing. Ah, oh, that's so great. I mean, I was really curious about those pants. <laughs> I mean, they were really cool pants. I have to say they were, you know, little bell bottom had a built in seam. And I was like, I haven't seen a built in seam since 1975. Where the hell did you get those pants? You know, <laughs> I needed them. I hope you got them. If you didn't, I'll have to search for you because I still remember where I got them. Um, in Palm Springs, actually. <laughs> But I, but that was like, just, that could have been a moment. Like, thank you so much. You know, have a nice night and ta-da. But in, instead we've developed oh, this friendship yeah. over time. And, you know, you come here, I get to see you. We talk on the phone. To, I've had a session with you and et cetera. Uh -huh. So, but is that an angel moment? The angel's like, yeah, you know what? There may be 200 people roaming about and yeah. like half of them are sickly singing on stage yeah, right yeah. now. But those two. They need to. <laughs> they should meet. Yeah, I mean, I, I can, I can speak for me, and I know, I, I believe it's an angel moment, right? Because mm -hmm. I work with angels, and I call them in every day. I do ritual every day to bring the right people into my life that are just going to mm, help me feel happy, help me feel connected, help mm -hmm. me feel um, just alive. And, and I know that there's so many people who struggle out there with finding their right relationships and finding the right circles and even in the quote unquote right circles of people who are all doing the same things it doesn't mean that's the right people so i do believe that it's angels I, I believe that angels kind of have walked with me for a while and that's why um i i got to have a book and and i get to do these things i feel like everything that i do these days is angel fueled and i always lean on them for everything including my friendships and including my my connection and my closeness with my daughters because even in our family relationships, we 
let's say your career goes gets bigger and or gets smaller, it's so easy to lose connection with our spouses, our partners, our children. So I work with angels to bring even my children closer to me and closer to us. And and anybody who's coming into our family life, I ask the angels to help us all gel together. Was it the angels who told you to write the book? Yeah. Mm. Yes, 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 yes. Were you resistant? Well, the, it's the angels who told me to even talk about angels out loud <laughs> to people. Yeah. This and is interesting. Yes. I mean, it's all it's always been the angels. I'm an introvert. I don't mm. necessarily want to be seen or need to have my face and lights and and all of but that. Look so, at this phase. I mean, this is a phase built for camera people. <laughs> I'm telling you. Oh my god. <laughs> um Okay, so the angels tell you to write it. You're like, yeah. please, you know, maybe you can knock on someone else's door. They're like, no, Mrs. Yeah, Corinne. Yeah. I mean, at this stage with the book, I was already down the rabbit hole with the angels already. So this book is based on a 21 day course that I taught internationally. Mm. And, and that miracle started happening for people. But the first time I, I brought that course out, yeah, I, I was a little butthurt about it because um, it happened at a time where I didn't feel like it was, it was the right time, but they started nudging me and they said, no, we have to do it now. So I have this weird feeling that this is not recording. Really? I really do because people should be writing and because, and I know it's showing us a time, right? <laughs> and I know it's saying it's streaming, but people almost always write. But maybe it's a weird time of day, Deb. But no, it's seven o'clock somewhere. And I just have this weird feeling. And there should be, I think, some options. And it's if people are seeing else. us, <laughs> if you don't write, you're going to freak me out. Um, look. Well, can we check our phone? Okay, where are you? Let's yeah. see. Let's see if we're on. Because if you're not going to comment, I'm going to cry like a baby. Well, I'm going to cry too. Because this is that. a this is a hell of a conversation, is, is and the so angels are gonna. Okay, how, how do I find you? Well, that's me. Okay, and so is it here? Yeah, it should be here. Wouldn't that be funny to see ourselves? Oh, so we're right here, Deb. Okay, so where are you, people? There's one. I see one per. Oh no, that's me. <laughs> okay, well, people. Oh, there's two people right there. There's another person. That's so hilarious. <laughs> Well, she click like, okay. <laughs> tune in. <laughs> I'll tune in to us. Okay. All right. Well, that's all we needed. That's hilarious. Thank you for checking. I do actually feel better because people um usually write a lot, so they'll write a lot even in the replay. But okay, so you know, it, I, I am fascinated by this also because of some of what's what's happening um, a bit. What I'm called to in my life right now. So it is interesting to be tasked if you will, it's not a terrible task to work with angels, mm -hmm. but to be asked to do something when you're really going, really? I know. I like, know. do you think, could we negotiate? Yeah, right. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, don't you find with those things that you're being called to do, there's this surge of joy that comes with it. And then your personality resists it. So like, it's yes, I had angel shame, but the inside <laughs> of me was like all about angels. I was still holding on to this old edifice, this old building mm. that was trying to die and fall away and crumble, but I was clinging to it because that was my safety. And I feel like that's how spirit moves through us. And it's going to call out, you know, the, the old building and you're, mm. you're going to have to get that battle right out and start breaking it down. But you know, that those things that you're called to really talk about, you want to talk about, you yeah. actually really do. It's just the fear of ridicule and shame. And I know that in my, um, in my career and being up to the task being up to the task but also you know i spent tens of thousands of dollars on a traditional license as a psychotherapist mm. and if i start coming out with angels you know are people gonna whatever go well all of a sudden she's talking about angels <laughs> but you know the thing is is that you know the same people who had the had the judgment about me are the same people who are calling me now for career advice See what I'm Mic saying? Mic drop. You got, you got to own your shit is what I'm saying. You just got to wow. have to step it up and just claim it. It took a couple of years for everyone to kind of see the evolution of my career and that it was, it, it, it skyrocketed compared to where my therapist friends, what they were doing, as in they're still working so hard hour by hour 
And then I started moving internationally where my time was expanded and I was like happy and mm. touching lives and reaching more people. And they're still working like insurance, right? Like for half what they're, you know, really earning. So yeah, they're coming to me. I just had someone, someone actually, a therapist is stalking me right now <laughs> to help me understand, to help him understand how to go international and how to do his soul work because he's mm. an, he's an energy practitioner and he's still trying he's still working um psych, the traditional psychotherapy realm so how do you do that so i'm just saying all of us there's so many people out there who have this emergent shazam that wants to come out we want to lock it down but wow I god think this is a really good conversation actually you have no idea really yeah it's actually very profound and i i so if you could offer people one thing around this, because this came to you, right? Yeah. So that could be a little difficult for folks to hear. Like, yeah, but you know, she had the miracle. We're gonna put show. I did have you. a miracle. I did. Right? You got that. You I'm got waiting me on for that. mine. So like, got me on that one. Yeah. So let's see. People are like, whether they are counselors or in some other realm, but they're saying, yeah, but I do this other thing, and I feel that's really what my calling. What is one thing they can do? Because essentially it's taking off a mantle. It is. And it's allowing the energy of who your soul truly is and what you have been truly called to do mm -hmm. to flow through you. Now, I understand the trans transition can be, you know, something to navigate. You don't necessarily want to just quit the day job and move over mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. But what is something people can do to bridge that so they really can feel I'm fully embodying why I'm here, mm -hmm. what brings me joy, what allows me to serve? Mm -hmm. uh, I think the first thing that most people would need is uh, a community of support of mm -hmm. people who understand the next division or who are willing to see it sometimes for them. Mm -hmm. Um and also mm -hmm. to take the small vision that you have of yourself and toss it away because even whatever we're thinking is smaller than anything we can conceive of. And so I give everything up to spirit and I go, okay, help me, help me figure this out. This is where I want to go. And, and I don't know how I'm going to get there. Uh, but really what spirit does is it helps infuse you with greater genius and bring you the right people, the right connections that just like, give you energy as opposed to suck your energy dry. Mm. Um, but I, yeah, I, I say have the vision, have a community and, and listen to the voice without, without uh, discounting it because sometimes it starts as a tiny whisper mm. and it might seem small in the beginning. You know, and while you're saying that, so just because I am deep in this book, it also makes me realize with what you're saying that when we do this, when we have that, it's a blind faith in, in a way, because we're not there yet. So it's it's kind of weird to be putting on this new suit or idea, mm -hmm. right? But if we also use some of the principles here, it's amazing probably what can show up. Oh my God, I need to do this. So this is a download I'm having <laughs> in this moment, this conversation, holy moly, because I received something um, when I was in Costa Rica doing plant medicine and I have been like, not willing, super willing, big ish. And what do I do with that information? Yeah. Right. But I realize that if I employ what's here and keep following your daily 21 day plan, which is so easy, but for me, easy, so good. And it's so easy. Uh, that they can align to make this happen on my behalf. Yes. I can have something like what you had happen. Oh yeah. Doesn't have to be yeah. the birds and the, you know, no, but in my no. space, something can come to me with great ease to help yeah. unfold the way. Absolutely. And you, you can get th even just clarity, just personal clarity on like, okay, the vision just came into sharper focus. Um, but you essentially just become a magnet for awesomeness. You know, and sometimes the awesomeness is something you can't even conceive of. It's not even the download. It's better than that. It's cooler mm. than that. So, yeah, I mean, we don't know. Miracles are real. Yeah. And so it's like you you open yourself up to the miraculous. And I think mm. that all of us, like you and me and most of us grow up in this culture of 
suffering and having to work so crazy hard and figure everything out. And so, um, so working with angels is what I found is it just mm, makes life a lot easier and it opens you up to this field of, of awesomeness. Well, this is so beautiful. Um, I just want to tell you guys, I'm going to do a little visibility plug here while we're going to take a very quick break and let you know, for those of you who want to be interviewed on radio and podcasts and you don't have publicity knowledge, you don't know where the shows are, and it doesn't matter, I have a course. It is opening up again, and it's very finite. So once the seats are filled it is closed, but I am offering actually a really special price for the next couple of weeks so that you can get in for the new year, the new class, Ultimate Visibility Formula, how to be interviewed on radio and podcasts in 60 days or less. And I teach you not only the entire system, so you can do it for any launch, any time. I also teach you uh, private coaching. So you will be with me live you, no, no one gets left behind. Go to debbyd.net slash visibility. And it, there is the very special price as well. When you register today, you get a free session with me, a private $500 session that we will go through your media strategy. And I can tell you, this has been a game changer for people has changed their lives, finding their message, learning their branding, going through elements of interviews that were not working for them, or even people who, much like my introverted friend here, uh, really didn't think they were built for being on camera or mic. And I can tell you one of my clients actually has a reality show on a major channel being built around her right now. So tr trust me, if this is in your calling, whether you feel you're built for it or not, I work with amazing people who have amazing results, debbyd.net slash visibility. And um, we're back with Corinne Grillo. Her website is corinnegrillo.com. Her book is The Angel Experiment. And um, I want to ask you about inviting people in for, you You talked about, you, can, uh, you said bank account. I loved how you said that. It wasn't just you can have more money. You can improve your bank account for people who want love. You can have that if, for people who are just seeking peace for people who may be in a position or somewhere in the world and say, I just want some protection. I want to feel safe and secure. Mm -hmm. Talk about how we can manifest that or who you suggest we call upon. Well, there's a variety of, uh, in, in the book, I talk about the different kinds of archangels, but what I like to do with archangels is help weave. I, I'd like to invoke more than one at a time sometimes because it's like creating a braid of, of good juju. Mm -hmm. And so um, in abundance. So if you're looking for a boost in your bank account, a lot of times, you know, we just have to shift our feeling about our bank account sometimes in order to at least open the road for that. So sometimes I'll, I'll call on, you know, the angels of healing. So Archangel Raphael, even though he's technically an angel that can help heal your physical body, he can also help heal your bank account if you're having struggles there. And so um, each angel has a frequency and you can really weave their energy uh, around that. So like Archangel Michael is a protector and I'm so glad you mentioned people feeling safe and protected mm -hmm. because I feel like that's almost primary. Mm -hmm. If we can get ourselves to feel 100%, not 100%, but maybe even 65% safe and secure, then maybe we have the chutzpah to go out and get the job or create that vision that we mm -hmm. want for ourselves or go say yes to that, that love relationship that we want. So Archangel Michael is so wonderful at creating safety and protection around us. And we just right now, I'm just feeling that one right now for everybody. It's just, how about more protection and more safety so that we can just go and be the rock stars that we are. Rock star angels. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That really speaks. To, and it's amazing since I do visibility work, um, that safety is actually quite big. Right. Yeah. I was interviewed yeah. today on a show and they were asking me, what, what is it about visibility? Why do people not? And of course there are the pedestrian answers like, oh, you know, people are playing small and, but I don't actually believe in that. And that was my number one, mm. you know, there was something about shame because, you know, for me, that was my shame story. One, yeah. I don't want to reveal all of who I am. I don't want you to ask me what my journey is. I don't want to tell you about my childhood. It's like, let's just, let's just, you know, way mm -hmm. fast forward. So there had to be a lot of healing for me around that. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, and I'm, 
also curious when you say healing your bank account, what does that mean? That feels powerful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, okay. So when you see the world, so I see the world as if everything is alive, like mm. your house is alive, nature's alive and spirit is infused in all of it. And so if you really think about how you think about your bank account, a lot of people get like, even if it's just you conjure up the image or notion of money, a lot of people start freaking out physically. Some people start breaking out in sweats. And so if you have a challenged relationship with money slash your bank account slash your credit cards, then I highly recommend working with angels to help smooth out the energy there and heal the relationship between you and your bank account and your money. If you don't like looking at your bank account, that's a sign that you need angel help mm. to, to help you just at least face the truth of what's mm. happening in there. And anything that you resist is going to continue to have problems. So I, ju I just find uh, everything that is in your life is a relationship whether it's a relationship with your car, relationship with your partner or, or your money. I want to uh, give you a little testimony here because something interesting happened to me today. And, you know, one thing you say throughout this book, Corinne, is, you know, don't write anything off as a coincidence. I want you to just take note of things that happen. Um, and this literally, of course, happened right before you came. So I've got a mom with Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. It has been very, very, very stressful. I'm the one on the West Coast with her. Everybody else is back East. Mm -hmm. So I also want to be clear. I've got a brother on the East Coast who's amazing, doing the best he can, totally you know, rolled up sleeves. My uncle, Jeff, same thing. They're really like, I don't know how people do this alone. Phew. And at the same time, I felt really, really alone being the only physical person here, taking her to facilities, you know, managing a lot of stuff, five phone calls a day, 20 texts from our little group trying to manage all her daily dramas. And um, so it's, it's also at the same time as being very stressful, it's been an amazing exercise in detachment. She's got a God, I'm not it, things like that. So I will tell you with your, uh, I'll give you guys a, a view. If, so I think I like seeing things personally. So you can see what this looks like. So day three, and it's again, short, you know, clearly short is meaningful to me and not about my stature, but you know, and here it is, there's some information. You go right into a meditation and if you don't want to, and there's an invocation too, which is super, I love. And then you go to this uh, website, which I'm not going to show you because you have to get the book, but then you get to hear Corinne leading you through that meditation, two, three minutes and you're out and you start your day. So I've been doing it and people have, I know, it's been difficult getting her in a facility for so many reasons, her money, her, she has a cat, she needs hip replacement, a gazillion things that have precluded and thwarted every attempt. And I literally have had in these angel invocations, putting my mom, like I can't, but I'm going to turn this over to you. And today it doesn't even make sense that my <laughs> uncle found an unbelievable amount of money belonging to my mother in some kind of a, here we go, air quotes, like a real estate investor <laughs> what? path that he followed. I mean, a way chunk of change that we had no idea existed, wow. which suddenly is opening the door for her to get into the, the place she wanted, the only place she was willing to go to, that will also help us to pay for many other pieces getting oh her in. And, and I, I was walking around before you came, walking my dog and going, wow, like, oh my God, the burden, fine, now there's hope. I know there's other pieces getting her in there mm -hmm. and I'll show up for each piece a day at a time, but... And then I went, oh, this is the only thing I've done differently in about the six months I've been dealing with this. Wow. Wow. So I don't know because, you know, this is all kind of new to me, mm -hmm. but I'm really grateful. Wow. Deb, that's so, let me just give you a hug. I'm so mm -hmm. happy. 
Oh, wow. That's amazing. That's really amazing. You know, we were and talking that's, about that's your why book. I do it. That's why you do this. That's why I do it because that's that's the stuff that happens. You're not alone. Like you're mm. not alone and you're doing this whole thing like you have to muscle through it and what if you just ask for help, right? And we don't know. We don't know. So that's why I do it. And I get to hear those kinds of things like from you and from so many beautiful people around us these it's just you never know what's going to happen, but it's usually exactly what they need. Mm. And that we don't have the imagination for. It's just boom. Here, how about this little pebble? Yeah. And that's a big fucking boulder. <laughs> that's not even a pebble. That's like a it's mountain. Like a it's a mountain. But yeah. you know, now our texts, my family's texts are hilarious. Like maybe we have siblings we don't know about. <laughs> <laughs> just lighten the love, just lightens the energy. Oh, that's so good. Mom, what else, what else don't we know? The great mom caper. <laughs> like how did she even pull that one off? Oh, I don't wow, know. Dad, that is so beautiful. I'm so happy that happened for you. <sighs> so oh, wow. I guess I want to talk more about you. Um, I, I do want to know more about you. And I want to... Because you're so much more than this. And I know you gave us a, you know, a glimpse in the beginning of some of the things you provide, but I want to open the door more for um, what is swirling for you right now? Because if I know one thing about people like us, change is sort of the order of the day. Mm -hmm. Just when we've arrived and it's like, click, 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 things are going well, something appears and it's yeah. like, ah. Oh, magic dust that we may not be willing to step into quite yet, but it's calling. Mm -hmm. What is your calling right now? What are you feeling in your life personally mm. or professionally? You know, what's interesting is that this year was, was a huge shit show for me, mm. especially summer. Summer was intense. And I know a lot of people who are sensitives went through a really grindy, having to chew it out and just get through the muck kind of, kind of time. But I, I feel like I'm right in the middle of this whole new iteration of not just my career, but myself and how I want to show up in my family and and show up for for other people, you know, the people that I, that are in my communities. And so I think I'm right in that in that not knowing stage, and mm -hmm. it's really uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So I'm so glad that I have this book to talk about because that is like, okay, I this is what I do know. <laughs> I know, I know angels, but you know, my, my family life is, is pretty, pretty intense, not in a bad way. It's just like a lot to, of lot to navigate. Um, but we're, we're moving through it. So I, I understand that very well. Mm -hmm. I really do. And I understand the discomfort and I understand the sense of knowing, oh my God, I'm at some kind of a crossroads here, but I'm not clear. So how do you navigate that? What do you do? Do you have a daily ritual or do you have a, a way that you employ the angels or otherwise? Because you're, I think, deeply connected even way beyond angels. Yeah, I, um, at this stage this year has been a true lesson in surrender. Mm. And, and also a, a lesson in, really pulling back polarities and, and getting out of the right and wrong for me, um, right and wrong in life and really understanding like the duality. I, it, that's kind of like a, a different concept, but it's really intense this year where it's like, you know, equal and opposite uh, and, and all it, it's all coming to a head essentially where I'm being called to just sit and wait Oof. and not act. And it's very uncomfortable for me because I can be highly strategic in my mm -hmm. life. And this year, it's just like the second I get too strategic, I just get nailed. So it's like, okay, I'm just, I'm giving it all up. So my daily practice for that is really what I, I teach in the book is just, I, I just keep praying. Sometimes I beg, I, pl I plead. <laughs> Sometimes I beg, I plead, I cry. <laughs> Sometimes I'll have the composition to invoke. <laughs> But, you know, I was mostly crying over the summer. Um, but, yeah, I think that, you, you know, when you sign up, like, you know, you make big bid for, bids for power in your life, Deb. And 
And, um, and I make bids for power in my life and we all make big, big, especially this year, we made a lot of bids for power collectively. Like mm. you want to take your life to the next level. Mm. And in order for you to do that, we have to crumble away the old building. And mm. when that happens, it's just, Ooh, who knows? So it takes discipline to allow things to unfold and to not micromanage them. And so I just pray, I invoke, I beg, plead, cry, and I stay connected to beautiful people. Mm. And it's really um, the people who are, you know, working with the book or uh, people in my communities online that really feed my soul because they're having wonderful experiences. And I don't know, like without those people right now, I'd be like, you know, who am I? I'd just revert back to when I was 19 years old and not knowing a damn thing about myself. And, oh my God, Jeff, I got into a lot of trouble back then. <laughs> A lot of trouble. I, so I want to know a little about that because I know the word jail has come up <laughs> now <laughs> and then, and we're not talking recently. So I would like to know because I was a wild child. Yeah, I went to jail once. Actually. You you did jail time too. I did. I oh almost wanted gosh. to say no, but dear God, I did. Yeah. Wow. Okay. How many days? No. I I no. Thank you. God, you have to know at that time in my life, I was 20, 20 or 21. You have to know that if I had spent more than my fingerprints <laughs> and a few other things, I know, and then I know. a day in court, I would have, no, I wouldn't be here with you. No, I, yeah, yeah. I was wild, but that way too sensitive. So mm -hmm. thankfully, no. Did you spend day, a day or more in jail? I spent. Three days, Deb. Did Three. You? It's because I went in on a Friday. Oh my God, I'm learning so much. <laughs> I know. Here's okay. to rehabilitation. I was in my woman. 20s. Okay. Here we go. Oof. I'm going like, to finish this one off. <laughs> I know. I, I think I'll drink to that. All right. Here's the thing about jail clearly, it works for some people to straighten you up, <laughs> like works. scared straight. Yeah, no, it was three days and it was only because the oh I went in on a Friday and then so we couldn't have a court till Monday. So it was Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Was it spooky? Was it like- Oh you my were God, it like was the most grotesque experience of of all things. So you were not alone. You were in with a lot of with other- With a lot of other people that were, wow, made me look like the wuss that I actually was back then. And I'm just saying like, oh, three days in jail. A lot of people are like, no big deal. For me, oh. because I am a wuss, oh, yeah. it was, you know, that's like a lifetime. And that really was a contain a cooking container. When I came out of those three days, I was like, there's a lot of things that are going to change after this. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, is that I, again, I was living a pretty officially good life. As a matter of fact, I, my title at the time was senior client relations manager. Yeah. At a, at a firm. I know. I, I was just like a weird binge, a little crystal. We, am I was, allowed to ask what you did? It was a little crystal meth situation. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> just, so you got just, busted. Just a oh, wee, that's so it was a wee crystal meth situation. Uh, yeah, no, I struggled a lot when I was in uh, my twenties, I had a really rough childhood. My mother died when I was a teenager. Mm. And then I seriously clawed my way out of adolescence. On the one in one stream, I went to UCLA and I did all this stuff on the surface that looked like I was doing the right things, but the back end of my need for chaos mm. told a different story. I understand. So I kind of kind of binged out, and then um, I had just actually won a state uh, award for my company, and it, the entire state, right? <laughs> and of course, when good things happen to people who need chaos and mm. feel really bad about themselves. It's just as much of a trigger as if as, as failure. So for me, it's like, okay, how am I going to, I finally get a vacation. I've been working so hard. I know what I'm going to do. <gasps> You're going to spend it in jail. <laughs> I'm going oh, to do God. some crystal meth with my shitty boyfriend and we're going to just get our asses thrown in jail. So that's that's what happened. Girl. I know for 3 days, right? And like and and these guys that you know, of course the second you're you're taken in and any you may know know this feeling. I don't know if you spent enough time. They don't treat you like a human. They treat no. you like an animal. Yeah. And they don't believe anything that you're saying. They look at uh. you like you're a liar cuz they're, you know, their their job's hard too. But wow, I remember the dehumanizing feeling and 
and the juxtaposition of being there with the with the population that I was with that they all seemed pretty comfortable. You know, a lot of them, uh, cause you talk to them after three, three days, like this was not their first rodeo. They keep coming in and out and uh, in and out. And so oh my God. I know it's pretty crazy. <gasps> so by the end of that, I, I, it was actually the, the apex of my dark night of soul. I think it really showed me a few things. I, I didn't have the framework to really strategize about my life. But the life that I walked into was no longer my life. And and uh, I was a different person. It mm. was like, it stripped me away of so much crap. I felt super innocent after that. I couldn't, mm. like, I couldn't do the same things I was doing. Yeah. Um, even, sp I remember m speaking in a different ways and, and my friends, I couldn't connect with them anymore. It was like this whole three day in the cocoon of, of, of shit. And then I came out going, this is not the life that I want. And so, yeah, within a matter of six months, I quit my job. I quit all my friends. I moved. I stayed with my amazing sister who let me have a sabbatical. Luckily, I had some cash saved. And she, I essentially meditated for that first year and, and I did Vipassana, if you've mm. ever heard of Vipassana. So I did a lot of that and slowly built my life back up slowly. Well, recreated your life because that's, you yeah. know, to stop that behavior, to allow in this energy you call innocent is very powerful. That means that you're embarking on a place of integrity, mm -hmm. right? Of living from a truth and of a, there is some value, even though you weren't fully valuing yourself yet, but still there is more value than doing this to myself. Um, you know, and <laughs> never underestimate <laughs> the power of being scared straight. Like, <laughs> I know. Wow. It was like, wow, I know. I, yeah, that was not worth it. So that, that thank was, you for I, telling I, us. Yeah. That's thank you for being so I, transparent. I definitely retired from crystal meth after that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was my retirement party. And, um, yeah, I mean, I think that when I work with angels, it's really important for people to know, like for, for me, for people to know that I wasn't born this way. I was not born talking about angels and, you know, live in the spirit and all this stuff and, and um, went through a lot in order to really have the moments of insight that I, that I have. So every day that I'm alive today is really a miracle for me because I was really trying to tap out earlier in life in a variety of interesting ways. And jail was just, the tip of the iceberg. Mm. I wonder when you say that though, Corinne, if actually you were born this way. And I, I so the only analogy I can think of is a walnut. Right? The answer is yes, Deb. I am exactly <laughs> like a walnut. All right. Got me. <laughs> so doesn't it make sense? A walnut because it has a really hard shell. Maybe that's why I was going to say cocoon, but <laughs> like a walnut. I'm going to go with walnut. <laughs> okay, stick with walnut. It's so, fine. So, you know, you're the nut inside. <laughs> you're the walnut inside. And you're perfect. And you came in already connected to the angels. You probably have been like this shaman, witch, fabulous <laughs> healer. Lifetimes. Lifetimes. Lifetimes, yeah. But in this particular incarnation, <laughs> you had a soul contract, right? Mm -hmm. You were going to learn some pretty uncomfortable things. And that's the <laughs> shell, right? And that feels like that's who we are. Yeah. But in fact, all of these life experiences chip away and the choices you made and the, yeah. I mean, even the fact that you would leave a situation like that and choose to meditate every day and do yoga and in, engage in these practices. And you have not had your spiritual awakening yet, but something is being built over time that is just, you know, just a little tiny, the most tiny ass tweaks, almost because you're still sucking up almost but... imperceptible tweaks along the way yeah and uh yeah i mean you know we're, we're born as these amazing beings all of us but you know that really got smacked out of me at six months like literally and so i don't really have the concept of me having that connection mm. and it took a while for it to get chipped away over time. But yeah, I feel, I mean, you know, there's always been this thread of optimism and positivity. There's always been this hope, mm. but I've always been the, the one in all of my friend group who's willing to try fucking anything. I'll yeah. do it and I'll do it 10 times harder than anybody else. And this is like back in my twenties, you know? And so I was like the Guinea pig 
Like if there's something new on the horizon, well, who's going to, Oh, I'll do it. I'll do it all the way. And so it was like this, <laughs> this, this, like mm, this willingness to die or touch the edge of death mm. because that never scared me. It only stopped scaring me when I had kids. Cause then I had finally something to live for. Mm. And then it, it, when then like with my kids plus the angels then the angels came and actually gave me something to be of service like in, in a bigger way like gave me a sense of joy and hope not just i was alive for my kids out of duty but now it's beyond duty it's because i enjoy being alive yeah, yeah. i love this story for you i love that you were so perfectly chosen for this because twofold, on the one hand, you have so much life experience and darkness that you've been through that you can look at your clients and the people that you're reaching, even through the book, who may never meet you, uh -huh. and they will mm. relate to you. You can speak to them in a way nobody else can. And it gives you the personality that I fell in love with in the two seconds when we first met back then, like who walks up, and it's not just that you said, I love your pants, where did you get them? It wasn't that. What you said, and I can't remember the words, it's who you are, it's the way you say what you say, that's freaking hilarious. It's the author who writes Angel Juju and other things that you say, you even curse in the book. I you know, speak in a way that you are, but it allows us to resonate, to be touched. So you really are the perfect messenger. Oh, thank you. It's so true. Like I'm really getting the full like story. Oh. Why? Why you need to go through what you go through so that we here yeah. can like, yeah. ah, feel heard and seen. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm feeling a little touched by that. And it, I think it's because I know that there's someone who's going to be listening to this and they could be in their lowest point mm -hmm. and they could not know, they might not know that they're right on the precipice of something so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just want everyone to survive and to get to the other side of that because it's worth it and it's fun to live. And um, if you don't know that now, then let the angels show you. Mm -hmm. They say, don't, you know, uh, stay one more breath, one more moment, wait for the miracle. Yes, wait for the miracle, literally. And if I could mm. do this, by the way, I think this occurred by day two in vocation about <laughs> my mom. If that could happen, I, I mean, I'm the most open-minded skeptic, you have to know. So like, if that could happen for me with my mom, and it really is a huge deal. I mean, what's possible to heal your bank account, your peace, your, yeah. your life, anything that's going on. I mean, I'm going to keep going. And this is yeah. daily rituals important to me because I'm counterintuitive. I, I'll wake up and I will work out and then I'm going. I will be a workhorse because, I mean, it's in my DNA, mm -hmm. right? But I know enough to do, I know enough to do yoga. I know enough to do meditation, even though everything in me screams otherwise. Mm -hmm. And I know enough that when something comes to me like this, like do it, right? Yeah. It's like, yeah. and if not, we'll refund your misery. <laughs> <laughs> you can have it back. <laughs> it's free. It's free. <laughs> misery is free. I know. <laughs> so this is Dare to Dream. What do you next dare to dream? What are your future dreams and goals? Who, me? Yes, oh, okay. darling. I think my future is, uh, my future dreams and goals is to just have a lot more mm. intimacy with more people, just really get to know more people um, and open my heart more in whatever way that, that means um, I'm open. Are you going to travel more? I'd like to travel more. Yeah. I mean, I'm traveling a, a couple times a year right now, but I'd like to really get down on the ground with people again and, and move. I have an event coming in uh, February. So that's my next, my next one. But yeah, I, I love being uh, with people, hugging them and, you know, making that connection. So it's been a while because I've been doing so much work in other ways. Mm -hmm. So tell I us how we can work with you. Oh, wow. That's a good question. Well, come to my event. <laughs> come to my event in February. Well, tell me about it's it. 14, it's at 1440 uh, Multiversity. It's in Santa Cruz. It's a three-day retreat. It's an intuitive angel healing uh, event. Oh and um, it's going to pop off. When, when I do in-person events with angels, 
it it's like electric. So there's lots of healing that goes on. And if anybody's curious about really anchoring in their relationship with angels and how to open up their spiritual gifts and all that stuff, that would be a fun one to go to. Okay. And do we go to CorinneGrillo.com or Yeah, what? you can go to CorinneGrillo.com or you can go to 1440 Multiversity and look me up there. Or you can just email me on my website and I'll give you all the information. Okay. Is this, so my little everything is going whoop. You want to go? My, I think I might. Scooby Doo. Yeah, you need Scooby to come. Dab, you need to come. I mean, seriously, you need to come. By the way, people, <laughs> I have to tell you, like a little background. So, I hope you'll. Everybody will work with you at some point, whether it's in a group or privately, because I got a private session with her. So I have what I have a couple of gifts, but one of my gifts is I can feel a real healer. Uh, it doesn't matter. You know, a million people can pass me by and tell me all these great things they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when I get with a real deal, it's like, I always know. It's like firm, right? So I knew, but we were friends before we, way before we had a session. But I am telling you, I, I mean, I've taken my clients who I know need amazing people, love my clients. But when they need somebody, even when I'm coaching, writing a book, there are people who will come up against, I have a client who came, came up against um, ancestral stuff. It is clear through his writing, he needs to work with you. So I send them your way. But I am telling you, this woman is powerful. Aww. This miracle is a gift to all of us. So if you're also looking do you still do private sessions? Yeah, I don't have any listed. I should be on, careful. I don't have any listed on my site, uh -huh. but recently I'm opening them up. So you can also email me and ask for a session, and I'll give I'll, I'll give people the information. So they can go to my website, con go to contact, email me, say I'd like information on the session, and then we'll get back to you. I would love to. I'm telling you, I want more intimacy with people. So I'm gonna come back back out and do more of that i have so much fun doing it is the thing oh gosh <laughs> so it's so like it's so fortunate because you don't have to work hard or be logical if you just have them speaking to you all the time and you're yeah. speaking to people it's well, gorgeous it, i'm just it's really with those one-on-one -on -one sessions i get so inspired because spirit really does come through and it's like you know because i've been so focused in other parts of my career i haven't I haven't gone back to that for a while, mm. but I'm starting to kind of pick it up again a little bit here and there. I just, there's just nothing like it. So, yeah. So cool. We are at the end. And I just want to say, let's give a little gift to people. So for folks who are watching this, again, youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger, because you'll hear this on a podcast and that's cool. If you're like an audio person and this works for you, then I love you for tuning in. And I also invite you, if you like to see us animated, enjoy us drinking tequila. I mean, I don't think it's <laughs> any better than that. And if you want to see this gorgeous creature sitting next to me, then please, you know, go to YouTube and enjoy, leave us a comment. I really do read all the comments and I, I as much as I can, I write back to you. Mm -hmm. So if there are angel angels amongst us. She knew I was going here. So I could feel that if there are um, angels amongst us, then collectively for this moment in time, what do we need to know? What would the angels like to say to us? Uh, so I'm glad you said angels because it's more than one and there's a lot of them. And my sense is this overarching, uh, overwhelm in, in the community or in the listener. So if you're going through overwhelm mm -hmm. and, and worry, it's Archangel Chamuel and his posse <laughs> that are coming through and, oh, wait, or do you have a connection with Chamuel? I do. You do. Damn it. Then it's her. So this is her posse talking to your posse and- and uh, in order to bring peace, uh, all you have to do is ask for Archangel Chamuel and his whole posse. So just, you can call it a posse, you can call it a team, but there's plenty, plenty, plenty of angels coming in. And they're wanting to just kind of unplug you from, from uh, any heartstrings that you have and, and just the workload. So just you just sit, breathe, and ask Archangel Chamuel to come in and lift your heart from the responsibilities, especially as we enter into the holidays and and all the 
activity that we should not be getting into this time of year, but are still getting our mitts into. When you say activities, you mean over, go over to we go too many overboard. parties and too many too gifts much shopping and, too much and all the all the stuff. We're go, we're heading into the season where we're supposed to be slowing down, not mm. amping up. So that's why a lot of people experience depression or anxiety. It's like it's against nature to be working that hard, mm. um, but it is aligned with nature to be celebrating. So mm. celebrate and stay in community, but also don't <gasps> don't push yourself too hard. Okay. Oh my God. I just got a download for you. I'm so excited. Ooh. <laughs> yes. I'm going to have you create something with me. I've been wanting to do it. I'm going to tell you in a minute. I'm okay. going to tell people so they could hear this because they're going to want to be in LA for this. Oh. Um, Yay. Okay. I love the fact that they use the word celebration and thank you, Chamuel. You know what? So what I just want to tell the audience so they understand why it's really meaningful to me because I had an I had such a dark night of the soul um, uh, several years ago, and it was it was one of those dark nights. Am I going to choose to still be here or not mm. anymore? It was one of those real a classic, real, classic crossroads, <laughs> life yes. or not, or not. And um, I was given Chamuel, and I had never heard of wow. that name before. Uh -huh. But a healer came to me and said, "You need to work." and speak every day to Chamuel. Chamuel is so here for you and the healer of the healer of the healers to bring that peace which passeth all understanding to an impossible situation. And I did. I wrote to Chamuel. I oh my, journaled I'm getting to Chamuel. all of her body chills. I can't even believe it. Whoa. I had rocks, gemstones for Chamuel, I mean, on a daily basis. And you have to understand why this is all so important because I'm the uh, open-minded skeptic. So I'm the one going, <laughs> blah, 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 Chamuel, you know, this, this in my life. And I'm like, you know, if, if you ain't here talking to me, how do I know I'm being received? <gasps> These are the moments that sometimes, boy, when they say, wait for it, <laughs> it may take several years, but the fact that it comes up of wow. all the angels. Wow. Of all the many, and I, I have to tell you, Deb. I'm going to tell you, I've done some of these over the years, and it is literally the first time Chanuel has been the first angel forward for mm. a group channel. Mm. Usually, it would be like uh, it lately. It's been Ariel or M Michael, so it's definitely for for you and for your people that follow you on your vibe, on your frequency. Mm. It's like so perfect. And when Chanuel and his posse say, "Okay, people." Stop the over. You are enough. Don't over party. Don't over book. Don't over schedule. Don't over work. Don't over buy. Don't over shop. It. Nada. So I love the fact that they say it's a time to slow down, to celebrate. I really want them to tell me what does that look like, <laughs> and slowing down, capiche? But the but the celebration. What does that look like? Ooh, I want to celebrate ooh. like an angel and with an angel. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> what would they say? What if they were? Well, they are here with us right now. Besides I mean, tequila, we, we started with the tequila. <laughs> Here's the to Samuel and, and his posse. <laughs> we're celebrating already. We're getting started early. Is this it? Is this what celebration looks like? I think it's just connecting and having fun. Mm. How about that? So I want to know from you guys, what does simplicity in celebration look like to you? What does celebration, slowing down, being with, connecting, intimacy, look like and mean to you? And and how are you going to do that? Because, you know, we got to make that choice, right? Yeah. We have to say, this is the way it looks. This yeah. is what I'm choosing today. Mm -hmm. I would love to know. Mm -hmm. So um, I know we have a request to repeat, repeat a por favore, about your, well, your name is Corinne Grillo, G-R-I-L-L-O. And um, she is my client. So I get 10% of everything, but next year it's going to 15. No, <laughs> she is my buddy. And you can go to Corinne, C-O-R-I-N, Grillo.com. And I will give you a little uh, ticker tape show here so you can see that. And um, yeah, I and and what else? I I want. I just feel like there's more. <laughs> there's but wait, more. there's more. Oh, wait, there's always and it's more. not a Ginsu knife, right? <laughs> there's, but it could um, be. 
It could be. How can we help you become who you're ready to become next? Because mm. I get like, so I'm getting this interesting vibe that there's a way we can receive you anew mm -hmm. that will actually help usher in this new piece to who you going to be. Uh -huh. and, then, and I would like to be a part of that process. Okay, let's do it. Yeah. We'll figure it out. All right. Yeah. I think you're right. There's a whole new something, but it's in the birthing process. So yeah. I hope I can be a midwife. I hope I can be a doula. I think you are. Yeah. I would really love this. Um, so people, um, you know, angel questions galore. Uh, I will say again, for those of you, if you've missed some of this, then watch or listen to the replay because it's really important. And I feel, okay, I know where we're going to end this. So I'm going to ask you to <laughs> blindly open the book and pick okay. whatever page speaketh unto you with. And then as you do that, I'm going to, because I'm the ticker tape queen, and you see it's Dare to Dream podcast with Debbie Dashinger featuring Corinne Grillo. And for those of you who are ready for your next piece of being out there in the world and to let go of the shame you feel, to let go of the lack of safety, to even questioning whether you came here with a message when darling you're a piece of the puzzle of here of piece of the puzzle of heaven on earth at a time when we so need you trust me you came with your expertise for a reason and again hearkening back to the beginning of this interview what you are hearing Corinne say is it literally is about relieving those pieces that all of us, all of us, I mean, my God, the, for the first three decades of my life, I was an actress and a singer. That's how I made my money. That's what I did out into the world, period. And when that identity started to crumble, mm -hmm. that was very difficult. Mm -hmm. I had no clue. Mm -hmm. Three years I had to surrender. Now being uber creative, I didn't just sit back and knit, trust me. <laughs> I had a jewelry business and I made jewelry. I was speaking all over Los Angeles and making money and I was singing in front of bands and I, I loved all of it and I made money doing all of it and I knew none of it was the thing until I got here. Mm. So yeah, there's an unfoldment for all of us to trust and if it is your time to let who you really be out into the world, I will show you the way, trust me, I got you. I've done this dance before with many people. Go to debbyd.net slash visibility. And I'm having that special sale for the next couple of weeks only plus the free session with me when you register. So let's hear what Corinne has for us. This is the invocation we are supposed to hear right now. Okay, so this is an invocation about divine understanding with Archangel Uriel and Archangel Raziel. So I like to, we'd like to mix up the uh, the energies of the of the angels. And so divine understanding goes deep. It's beyond just your cognitive ability, but understanding divine things like divine timing and and being able to understand your life from a deeper perspective, like almost like we were talking about earlier, just because a lot of it, your life may have been a shit show. It doesn't mean <laughs> like my life per se uh, <laughs> in the past doesn't mean that it goes without understanding. Like you can understand it from more deeply. So we'll just call in these two angels to help you. If you are struggling mm. with understanding uh, whatever it is that you need more clarity with that you need a deeper perspective, whether you're struggling with a relationship or, or uh, with a job, here's a good invocation for that. Dear creator of all that is Archangel Uriel and Archangel Raziel. I ask for your help today in breaking down my limited thinking and illusions so that I can clearly understand and trust the divine guidance and signs that I'm seeing from my angels. I also ask that you open my understanding of spiritual truth and lift it to the highest possible level for me at this time. Thank you so much, Creator, Archangel Uriel, Archangel Raziel, and all of the other helpers. Ta-da. So Ta folks, this is her book. 
She's published with New World Library, who I love. I've done work with them forevermore, meaning they've sent me many incredible clients. And this time they went, oh my God, you guys are friends already. How does it get any better than that? So we're doing this one live because I wanted to be with Christine and then go out with her for a glass of wine after our glass of tequila on air. <laughs> so it is called The Angel Experiment, a 21-day magical adventure to heal your life. And as I said, for those who heard earlier, I already had a miracle just on day two of the invocation and man, did I need that miracle. So I'm gonna keep using this because, you know, what do I have to lose? I'm very excited to see what else happens. Plus, I also believe, by the way, because I teach book writing, a book is imbued with energy, right? And so it came from Corinne. So it's got her energy and it's got her, air quotes, angel juju imbued in so it is that special. So I do believe things can happen at that rate because of that. And by the way, I had Kim Corbin is going to love me, your publicist for this. But I want to say, I did have an interesting download for you. So for those okay. of you who are in the spiritual community know, you know, Doreen Virtue has made new choices. <laughs> she has made a new choice or two. Or three. <laughs> Perhaps four. And I'm just saying, they're interesting choices, but God love her. As long as she's happy, you know, and she's with spirit, that's cool. But, you know, she did kind of vacate. She did vacate her position mm -hmm. around angels. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that position is open. And it might be ready to be filled with some big shoes. <laughs> big shoes who's slightly more crass, a little more down to earth. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> yes. So like we need somebody who's speaking our language. So, you know, you could fill that space, never like her, which is a good thing, by the way, but never like her, but in a way that um, we're ready to hear oh, yeah. right now Yeah, for today. Mm -hmm. So for those who do want the private session with Corinne, CorinneGrillo.com, go right to her there. If you're interested like I am, I don't know, I felt the call of the wild when she mentioned that February... All I heard was 14, 14, 28th. It's February 28th, 1440 Multiversity. And if you want more information, you can also email me about it. But you can find me as an instructor at 1440 Multiversity. Okay. Com. It's yeah. a beautiful thing. And <sighs> it's going to be so freaking good. <laughs> That's the thing. It's going to pop off. Angel style. Okay. Well, you know, just to experience you in that way is going to be amazing. So great. And we'll have to do that anyway, because I know you and I want to go to Costa Rica. We're gonna so we're going to have stuff. to figure we're doing all kinds of a stuff. lot of trips out. But, you know, <laughs> this sounds like a beautiful way to do February. And I like 14 because it reminds me of Valentine's Day. So I'll remember that address. Corinne, thank you for bringing your brilliant oh, being thank you. to the show thank today. Thank you for having me oh here my God. and sipping tequila with me. That was fun. The best. Not the average angel interview. <laughs> let's put it that way. Yes. <laughs> and I want to end today's show with this quote that you might not have heard of, but you might appreciate. And this is from Francis Bacon. Oh. So it's just a little bit old. A little old. But Francis himself said this, the angels are nearer than you think. Oh. God's angels often protect his servants from potential enemies. When I die, I shall soar with the angels. And when I die to the angels, what I shall become, you cannot imagine. But men must know that in this theater of man's life, it is reserved only for God and angels to be lookers on. I hope you'll join me in my next interview because, OMG, I'm interviewing the amazing friend of mine, incredible nine-year-old, Neva Lee Rekla. And I kid you not, this beautiful creature is already a successful entrepreneur, rainbow child, people. She's an author, best-selling author. She's a speaker, and she is on a mission to inspire 1 million children to do business and also to encourage oh. adults to support the children. Because at the age of two, my buddy, Neva, asked for her first business cards and she <laughs> never looked back. <laughs> oh 
gosh, it's so great. <laughs> Subscribe to Dare to Dream. It comes into your inbox. Leave us a review. Write to me. I answer everything as much as I can. Thank you so much for joining us today. And remember, the secret to success is having the courage to begin in the first place. Thank you.